working hard. I'm getting that stuff ready for some Emerald Cup entries, baby. Woo! First place. <laughs> Polly Ollie's in the building. <laughs> Harvesting out almost full moon tonight. Beautiful. Yeah. Got an unreal crew out here, man. So cool. Nighttime <laughs> First harvest. time harvesting out at night for me, so this is so super dope. <laughs> yes. It's Mendo dope. Mendo dope. 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 Yeah, we're, we're washing some <laughs> unreal product that is sun-grown, organically grown here in Mendocino County yeah. that we are entering in the cup. Full circle from the farm oh, yeah. to the cold room. <laughs> we're about to bring you some metal dope vision on this resin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Dopers, Yo. the planters of the trees, we're back. Oh yeah, yeah, brother. yeah what up? Paul, oh, yes, bro. <laughs> yes, we just took a nice stab. We got a nice blunt in before we started this footage. This is a, you know, we want to do a nice uh, video again of this next level process. Well, now, you know, it's been a while since we did the first video with Pez. And yes, we're going to do has. an evolution of the game right now. This is like six years later. Right. Uh, Man, you can feel the difference. I'll tell you what, it's fucking Yeah, cold. you never had a room like this when we were doing it last time. And, um, you know, this is going to be for the Emerald Cup entry. This is for our personal entry. So, you know, we still like to do personal um, grows and personal entries. And we get to work with Pez, you know, at his own spot like this. Legacy mode. Very oh, special. And we cool. get to work with some new resin and some project power so we gotta you know we did our part now we're gonna pass it over to the professional yeah, resin yeah. collector right <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, work some magic Nine degrees right now. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, yo, what up, everybody? Uh, I know a lot of you know who I am. Some of you who don't know who I am. My name is Paul Pezbro. Um, been working in the cannabis industry for a very, very long time since I was 17 years old. I'm super fortunate here. I'm working with Mendo Dope and processing some of their Project Power, one of their new strains. Very excited about it. You guys have seen some big changes on what I've done in the past. I uh, started out flower rosin, no cold room. This is 2023 now. I've been working in my cold room since uh, 2018. We built this room in here. It's a 15 by 12 size room, tough shed and we converted it into a cold room. It's 39 degrees on my cool bot right now that I actually got from Mendo Dope. And uh, <laughs> that thing has came in handy. And the reason I love having a cool bot is because we need our water. We need this area cold as can be. You wanna be miserable. Well, earlier you guys were saying, man, I can see my breath in here. It <laughs> is cold. I'm layered up. We are washing some strains that are very, very sticky. Some of these strains, if it's very sticky, it's gonna stick to the bags. And, and if your water's not super cold or it's not super cold in the area that you're working in, then you're gonna lose loose resin. It's gonna stick to your bags. And so we've adapted and changed a lot on how we do things. And this room was built pretty darn professional style, lab style um, type of processing room. We've done all types of new stuff. We do almost all fresh frozen now. <clears throat> you guys will rarely ever see me doing any flower rosin for anybody. We haven't entered in a cup in a very, very long time. So uh, it's been quite a few years. We have seven awards behind our brand. Super thankful for the people that have helped me back then. I have Lindsay here who works with me. He's been working with me for about eight months now. And I've been teaching him a lot about washing, pressing, dealing with loose resin, talking to him about all different types of stuff. This is my boy, Lindsey, who's been working with us and he's been killing it. So you guys are gonna see the stuff that we wash, that we're all washing together, that we're doing for the cup. And uh, you know, hey, you know, are you having fun fucking washing this stuff? Just yeah, this playing stuff, loose resin? Yeah, it's, it smells crazy in here, by the way. Besides being 40 degrees, <laughs> but yeah, this this is awesome stuff to work with. Not only because it's awesome stuff to work with, but because who we're doing it with. Absolutely, I couldn't agree anymore. It's amazing. We get to work with unreal people 
we get to share this product with people. The terpenes in here are amazing. It's absolutely just stunning. And I just can't thank these boys enough for what we get to do with them and uh, show the world how we do, what we do, and why we do it. <laughs> Yeah, this girl is hot. Got 20 cones over in my ganja crop. Open up my jar, all the jaws will drop. Catch another seed and get to cultivate enough to let the fire. Yeah. Off top, I flipped this. I licked it, twisted, then I hit this. Ripped this, gripped it, fiscus clipped it. I lit this behind windows tinted. I got me a dime piece. Getting heady OG in the pine trees. I call it Sativa, she like high speeds. Me and my inner could take flights, we. Get high and lay low. Hot box ignite the flame -o. And I got more girls on the payroll than Puerto Vallarta smoking fuego. Drip, full melting train. You get a third degree burn if you held the flame. I get a little absurd with the herb I blaze. Roll another one and keep it coming with the fire. I make all my own ice. I have my own ice machine here. And everything we do here is repetitive. You know, I, I do five washes about per batch. Um, you can go a lot longer if you like, uh, depending on the strain, if the strain dumps. But a lot of the strains we work with, after wash number five, you see the yield at wash number five has gotten a lot smaller. And sometimes there's some green color in there that we try super hard to rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse, and it just does not come out on wash number five sometimes. So why waste any more time and trying to get a smaller pile of loose resin? to work harder and to keep renting and renting and renting and just get nothing out of it. So a lot of times we just finish at wash five and we're good. Okay. Shape of the ice matters absolutely. We like using square cubes, cube-like ice that don't have huge divots inside of them. If they have a divot in them, you can adjust your ice machine to make it less of a divot. Um, a little bit of loose resin will get caught up in some of those divots and uh, it just works the best for us. That's what we like using. We don't want to buy store. We don't want to use store-bought ice. Store-bought ice can be super contaminated, and uh, you just don't know how often those uh, large production ice facilities are cleaning and sanitizing their ice machines. So you can buy. You can be buying contaminated ice that's going into your unreal loose resin, especially if it's sun grown and all organic like this is. Why, why contaminate it from the get-go? We don't want that. We want the best of the best. This is medicine for people. That's what we're here for. We're here to serve these people the best of the best from Mendo County. That's what we stand for. Oh yeah, it smells really good in here. Like even the, the terps off of this is just overpowering the blunts that you guys just smoked in here. Like I can smell it because I'm also right in front of these washing machines, but it is it's just strong, it's sweet. Um, really, really nice. I'm with really brown, dark gray. That means this stuff was pretty fucking clean and didn't have a lot of fucking pests on it, you know? Like, yeah. So that's what we like seeing. Even on wash number one. Wash number one looking clean, We're son. Out, outdoor. Yay. Full sun. Sun grown, no tilling. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Just on the first 10 seconds. First 10 second wash right there. Minimal pull. I'm not trying to, you know, get all the good stuff in this one. We just want some of the good stuff with bad stuff on it out so that we can wash or press all the great stuff. So this is all the loose resin right here that we're cleaning up. This is not hashish. We like to teach people that this is loose resin. This can be turned into hashish. And we're going to scoop that bad boy right up just like that. Set her right on this tray. That is super clean first wash. For, that's what I was just saying for that's first so wash. Clean. Super clean. All these uh, puddles here are all first washes. and. Uh, They did very, very nice for first wash, as color-wise. Oh yeah, look at that. 
Super nice, milky, loose resin. So I like seeing. Just using very, very low pressure just to gather up all that loose resin. That is gorgeous. That's the money stuff, wash number two and three. Now look how much just sticks to the spoon. Just super sandy stuff. Sticky sand. So what happens with that is just, uh, we have a very small amount that's left in here and for me to keep collecting and collecting and collecting is just pointless. It just gets left in there until we get done with batch number five, wash number five. And then we'll really collect that last little tiny bit. You guys saw me doing wash number one and two and, and Lindsay filling up the wash machines with cannabis and ice and water, doing a 10 minute soak and then a 10 second wash. And then after that, we do a minute and a half increments every wash after that. Once you hit up to wash number five and you wanna do wash six or seven or eight, don't go past six minutes. Keep doing all those washes at six minutes. So we're wa ready for wash number three. Here comes Lindsay, gonna finish this job off and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna take a cup. This shit's gonna be fire, man. Super, super fire. Can't wait to press tomorrow. You guys are gonna see some phenomenal rosin come out, coming out of our presses, coming out of the freeze dryer. You're gonna see us packing bags and we're gonna have some fun. Tomorrow's gonna be awesome. So, yo, yo, peace. Continue. Bam, it'll be done tomorrow afternoon. What's up, y'all? Yo, what up? Yo, day two. Day two, we made it through the coldest uh, wash room experience ever. I mean, <laughs> we had it cold before in our rooms, and we've been in other rooms, like even at Heritage, it was, you know, kind of cold. Not this cold. That was super cold Came yesterday. well prepared this time. Extra Layered layers. up, extra socks. <laughs> 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 so we're ready. Day yeah. two. What are we doing today now? Oh, man, today you guys are going to get to see Woo! a lot of the magic happen. Uh, freeze dryers. Oh freeze dryer is done we're going to be pulling out wash two wash three wash four and wash five and we're definitely going to be pressing wash two and three um and if we have time we'll press the uh, three and four but i think we're going to really capture the two and three on on film and show you guys the best of the best of what we're processing for you guys for the emerald cup for the entry yeah. and that's what we're doing this evening and like you said it's it's really cold in here a little while once we start pressing we'll drop that temperature down just a little bit so it's not 42 degrees in here we want it you know closer to 50 55 degrees when we press uh -huh. it's a little more manageable we'll get a better yield so okay yeah it's cool. time to get serious right now so yes. we want to just make sure we're all the way through coming with the best of the best so paul's going to be working his magic you know getting the, the all the skills are coming in right now he's capturing <laughs> the final essence you know him and the, the crew here Lindsay back on the scene gonna be squishing mm -hmm. and squeezing it um what are attempts we running today too i mean doing a little oh, yeah down, yeah absolutely huh? today we're, we're gonna press uh, i've got three plates on my press i have the terminator turp stack that's what we're using Top plate is going to be at 140 degrees. Middle plate's going to be at 130. Bottom plate's going to be at 130. So my two bottom plates will be at 130. Top one's 140. And we should get a really, really beautiful looking rosin coming out today. Okay, this nice. loose resin is looking super nice right now. It's nice and white colored. That's yeah, frosted over right now. But yeah, it's it. <laughs> yeah, a surprise. A and then uh, <laughs> what, I think like, what about when we did the last video years ago, we were pressing at maybe 190 or 180 or something. I forget exactly, but what, yeah, we, it's yeah. interesting now with the hash rosin and stuff, you're pressing at a lot lower temps. Huh? Absolutely. So when we were pressing flower rosin, you know, we, we were learning a lot of different, uh, it was a lot of trial and error back then. We started out pressing 210 and then we figured out we liked pressing at 190. 190 for flour was really, really nice. We we're pressing ounces at a time. That's what you guys saw us doing on the videos. And now, you know, times have changed. Everybody's got into making live rosin, fresh frozen, and doing um, loose resin pressing into hash rosin, basically. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to adapt. I've personally been making, you know, bubble hash since I was 17 years old. and. Um, I had to adapt if I wanted to keep doing what I'm doing with hash because I love hashish, I love concentrates, and so I had to adapt to that. That's why we built this cold room. We need it super cold. We don't want those trichomes oxidizing, changing color on us, uh -huh. and it's really important. That's when you're going to start getting those 
rosins and, or, or loose resins or even hashishes that are really blonde and, and beautiful colors and, and have full terpene profiles. So that's what we're on the hunt for is full terpene profiles, large yields, beautiful colors, mm -hmm. and just potent rosin that's full nice. spectrum. Hell yeah. Yum, yum. It's on. Triple A grade. Woo. The finest. Yeah. Okay. The finest. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get in there then, huh? Let's yeah. go check it out. Yep. Let's pull some Let's trays. <laughs> pull some trays. <laughs> Uh, I was just going to say that this is uh, it's a team effort. This is stuff that I can completely do all on my own. I love, you know, <clears throat> teaching people what I do. And uh, I got Lindsay here learning everything that I do, all my secrets, and he's killing it. He's fucking killing what he does here <laughs> for Pezbro. And it's amazing if people actually show interest in hashish or loose resin and what, what this whole art is about. And uh, he's doing it. It's been with me for about eight months and I can leave Lindsay alone and he can do everything and anything in my room for what I do. So it's amazing having people like him working for me and with me and being a part of my team. Yeah, that is dope. And Lindsay, I mean, shit, it's a perfect situation. Lindsay's been out here for days and to be able to smoke and work and hang out super chill with you all day long, make bomb ass shit. It's such a Absolutely. fucking dope ass situation. Absolutely. I have tr uh, sheets on each side of us and uh, just doing each wash on its own tray so we're not bumping elbows and you know, this one we're just doing together for a cup. So what we like to do is just old school, traditional style, little mini temple ball without using, you know, the, the water bottle heat method is just palm pressing. And I like to see how fast and how sticky that is. Look at that, it just instantly turned into a little patty. This stuff is just very nice. And I'm just gonna roll that back and forth in my palm. It's just a really small piece. But I like to, you can already hear how sticky that is within seconds. Beautiful looking freaking hash already. Within <laughs> just a little bit of heat, not much. It's so gooey. I love making bubble hash or fresh frozen hash like this with my palm. That is just sugary, beautiful looking hashish right there. Uh. That's probably full melt. Woo! Gorgeous. That's bro. All right, so now we're going into bags. Yeah. Small it's bags, more small than less bags. than usual, trying to get the quality quality. Absolutely, we're going 10 grams per bag. Um, a lot of times when, when I'm teaching people and I'm pressing on a normal, we're pressing 20 gram bags, but uh, for cup purposes, I want to press less amounts in a bag. I want less restriction. I want full clarity, fire dripping out. I want maximum yield and uh, the best that it's gonna come out. And you can see that here, which is minimal palm pressure and heat, that these trichomes are melting and are seeping through the microns of this 25 micron bag, They're which smelting. is what we want. That's a solid puck right there. They're smelting. You can almost make rosin just by your hand pressure. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Pause just a little bit more and brush. That's how sticky. <laughs> These trichomes are just filled with I the mean, goo goo. Huh? You it's can just... see how loose that is. Yeah. And we're just going to do a simple loose. little fold like, like that. Just the keep you used to have back in the day. And you're like, oh yeah, I used to have keep like that. I put it in a jar and play with it. Room temperature. <laughs> Even at room temperature, you know, this is we're at 41 degrees in here. One palm press stuck One it together. Even a little bit of squeak. Yeah, a little trying to come through on the bottom corner. Oh, man. Oh, it's that changes <laughs> oh, so quickly. <laughs> That's so cool. It is so sticky icky. Breaking it down ever so gently. Yeah. Right. Don't hear oh, shit. Harvesting trees. Yeah, this is one we're taking a little bit off of. I'm gonna do a, 
a little Pesbro special. There's a lot on it. Oh my! It How much so we bomb all of a sudden? I didn't know it was this bomb. Oh, shizzle! Look how blind it is. It's blind. Woo! Blind, blind. All the way to the tip top. All the way up. We go to the red step. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, look how high we are up here. We stay high. Oh my god. Epic. Oh, so, so cool. It's start to sell. It's stressful for us as the farmer to put our hopes into these plants in solvent lists. It's like we've got We know what we're looking for too, and it's still tough. So. The final verdict is to get it to these people right here. Yeah, to finally, yeah, to see the last of the last stage, to finally see if what we did or what we planned to do and we would wanted to do, yeah. if it really worked and if we did something special or not. And if yeah, every all it checks all boxes. It's got the flavor. It's good to grow. It's uh, easy to work with. Like I like to say, for growing in general, harvesting for fresh frozen to debranch it and everything on the field to dump to not be a problem for Pesbro. It's nice when the, when the people making the hash are impressed. We want to always see them impressed. That's when we know that we're doing good because yep. they do a lot of bomb stuff all day long. <laughs> so when they're happy and then we make them look like, oh, whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> yes, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, yes. you, it, it's, it's, it's the farmer that makes the, the, the hash makers look good. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's a combo. It's so cool to just be reassured like, oh, I hope I thought I knew what I was talking about. It's just it's great. such a cool back and forth game we play of us to trying to grow the best resin that we can and keep it so nice the whole time even till we clip it and then pass it off to them and then now they work their magic and treat it so nice and do it so perfect and yeah they gotta have that's why we love working with Paul you know Paul's yeah. got the same love that we have that's just, this, the passion is there from the beginning to the end from same with he's a grower too you know not only is he a squash artist, but he's a ganja farmer, so he knows about these plants. He knows resin, he knows the passion, the work that it takes to cultivate real, especially full sun grown, full term yeah. outdoor and the elements and just pulling really top notch resin and bringing it to this stage right here is magnificent. It's not easy, as you can see these, uh, these rooms and these yeah. techniques and the working with the hash, it takes patience, it takes time. It takes a lot of hard work, really. I mean, when I watched Bell work that day too, it was like, damn, Bell, for eight hour shift for like a regular job, it's a lot of work. A lot of lifting bags, a lot of water, a lot of ice, a lot of walking around up and down. Countless lot hours of, of time. Pulling and bags. And dedication goes into bringing it to y'all in that final form you finally see. I enjoy every bit of it. It's super freaking <laughs> fun, man. It's so fun working with farmers like, like Mendo Dope. And, and and a lot of the other farms that I work with, it's just it's unreal getting to see the different flowers that are coming from different areas of Mendocino County that come out from the coast, that come from inland, that come from way out in the mountains, and, and it's all different climates and 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 different heats out and, and different coolnesses and. and you know these trichome heads are different they have harder shells they have lighter softer shells and it's just it's fun getting to work with all these farmers and seeing the different styles and different <laughs> textures and viscosities it's it's just amazing you know loose resin work versus what we did back in 2015 and 16 uh flower rosin flower rosin you're just packing bags and kind of hand pressing them and then smashing on the plates uh, pretty simple, pretty mindless, and uh, you know, working with loose resin, there's definitely a lot more steps, a lot more cuts. This cut that you guys see me doing here or folding up is, is a directional flow so that my pouch goes in here, 10 grams, gets folded, folded over that way, and it's basically going to have about a quarter inch on three sides of space and it's going to force all the rosin one way. Once it's being pressed, it has nowhere else to go except for a small quarter inch on the back and two sides, and it's gonna all force to come out to the front, plus the plates that I have. It tilts, so gravity allows the rosin to get away from the heat and plates quicker. So, Good important step. Definitely these, flow. these directional flows are something to learn and they're very simple to do and use and they're very easy to clean up after that. 
directional flow bag, 10 grams of loose resin inside of here of Project Power. And then what I'm gonna do here is put down a drip sheet so we get some rosin dripping down it so we get to see what it looks like, see some color. I want the best coming out here, best quality, best color, best yield. And I'm gonna just slowly warm up these bags here, kind of like what you saw me doing just by palm pressing. So all I'm doing here is just applying light pressure. I'm at 200 PSI. It's just getting them more sticky, more melty, getting it wet, um, making it sweat. And that's what I'm waiting for. Once I start seeing that rosin moving, I'll tilt my plates forward and you guys will start seeing rosin come out the front. And for, our, for us pressing, it's all about low and slow. I don't like pressing high heat and I don't like pressing super fast. And it, I already have rosin coming out. It's coming up to the front. Nice light yellow, super translucent right now. It's like you can see through it and see the color of the rosin between, in between. It's a trip. <laughs> it's like it's got this certain clarity through it and you can see through it, but it's, a, it's, it's amazing. I'm at 600. 700 PSI and you saw this just coming out of the front here at uh, just over 250 PSI This stuff is sticky. It's melty and It is gorgeous Mr. Bond would be proud of that too. He likes doing the small ones at least <laughs> he used to really go hard with the smaller the press He would get such fire. Yeah. Mr. Bond was super awesome too when you guys introduced me to him and you know him telling me a few things that he does or how he did things. He didn't tell me any secrets or things, but he, he just gave me a little hints and gave me a little, just little help me things, you know, it was super awesome. Yeah, so that stuff looks amazing. 2,500, 2,600. Oh, gosh. This is gorgeous. The people who get to smoke it for the cup entries are so lucky. <laughs> so many times they get the best of the best and uh, we get like barely any of it. Well, you know, everybody's <laughs> trying their hardest to put the best of the best in there. And so, yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm at 3,300 PSI. The, the flow of that is slowed way down. I'm not going to have any type of color change. I could let it sit here for a little bit longer if I want to, but I'm not, I'm not trying to get the largest and heaviest yield on here. I'm like I said earlier, I'm trying to get the best of the best, trying to get the majority of the yield before I risk any type of color change or any type of bag bursting or any kind of contamination of that bag bursting and leaching hash. And so that right there is the first press oh. of the Project Power. It's amazing. Live rosin. That stuff's gonna butter up quick. Look how blonde she's getting Ooh, already. So she's just turning blonde. It's so far You can see on. that blondness coming in. Dude. This directional flow has a lot of rosin in here. And what I like to show people if you do a proper press is you pull this puck out. You could see a huge window through there. There's very minimal loose resin inside of this bag. 100% great press. Yeah. You can't ask for really anything much better than that. You'll never get this little edges out. That is a, a phenomenal press. Ooh. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Here we are at 188 PSI. Last time I was at like 250 and she was already getting sweaty and wet and starting to leach out the front. So I just got to 188. So we're gonna let her sit for just a second longer and we'll see that rosin come out. Look at that, it's just gorgeous. I'm at 217 PSI and she is popping out. This stuff is greasy. Uh, look, it, it does really well on the whip form. I already tested some of the uh, other Fino. Uh, this stuff is coming out way lighter and I could tell it, it, it's getting a blonde color off that other first press we did and I could tell that it's gonna do really good on a whip job or even making a jam. So I just gotta really make a decision on how I wanna alter this and present it to them judges and put out the most terpene profile and just prettiest looking rosin that I can put out. She already wants to butter up right there on the corner. <laughs> so that's press number two of some gorgeous, this just looks, oh my God. That's the type of pressing we like seeing. Those did very, very well. 
this stuff is just translucent, clear. And, and right now, because it's warm, if we let this sit for, for a couple hours, it's going to even come out a lot. It's going to look a lot clearer. Putting the pressure down with a very low temperature, 140 to 130. Getting about what? What we were saying? 80% average we're, we're return, pulling, it looks like? Yeah, it was an 81 or 83% return. Okay, yes. And that is freaking really, really well good. That's what we like seeing. Anything over a 60% return is really considered really good. But you can get them 80%ers, 90%ers. Woo! Yeah, and then that's like gentle the whole time, you know. This has been gentle on the wash, gentle on the swoosh. Not going for yield at all. No, we're going for Still quality. Good yield. It's a very good sign. Yeah. Ooh. And the quality is so good already. Can't wait to see what this ends up being at the end of the day. It's going to be so tasty when you take your first dab of the year. Mm. Oh you haven't mm. took a dab yet this year. Hell no. <laughs> Usually I'll be like six months into the year without a dab, but special occasions. <laughs> Tell me to bust down the chest. That's what you need, and I'll move out of your way. Uh, yeah, 62.72 Six, or something like that. Of loose resin. Turning into 44.5960. Looks like we got what we needed to get. We got what we needed to achieve on the on just one bag. One wash. Just one number two. Nice. Uh, that, that, that's really, really good. Um, well, we pulled 44 grams. That's great. What you thinking? Fucking fire as fuck right there. Oh man. Looks like the Project Power is something special with that resin, that's for sure. Yeah. Paul just captured some unreal shit. Uh, oh man. Lindsay's over see there it. squeezing the next batch. Oh my god, look at it. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Nice little chubby puddle. Three Chubbers, huh? Look yeah. at those little chunks there, dude. Chubby wubbles. Dicky, but. Little mini pile of mini crepes. Right, they're Layers. all stacked up, yeah. Oh, yes, <laughs> mini crepes. Ooh. Oh, man. Playing with rosin. Yeah, oh, all totally fucked up our, our uh, plants, huh? Oh, it smells oh. so good. Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! It grows like a TGA plant. It reminds us a lot of... Characteristics of the simple. resin that was on it at an early age. And the way that's a, back to some old substrains. It's like the way the resin would grow on substrains a lot, it would have so much crystals on the stems going to each bud. And it was like uh, not super, you know, more sativa, not super dense, like separated. This one has all that same traits. Yeah, and this one stood out. It was different than every other project power in the past. So this is very cool to take it to this stage. This one might be sent to us, or found us from sub. I think yeah. this would be sub's favorite one. If we were showed in the garden, if you would like If it happens to one, win or get in the top <laughs> placement, that's uh -huh. gonna be insane. Dude. Woo! Paul. Yeah. That's super awesome, man. man. <laughs> Big shout out to sub too, man, because you know I got to do a couple shows with him. He asked me lots of questions about pressing. He was doing some pressing down below his house. And uh, big shout out, man, we miss you. And uh, this grain is awesome. Woo! Project yeah. power, man. They and it's got, you know, the it. Gringo they Loco's squash. got the Mendo Dope. Yeah, yeah this all, all of our strains will go back to the Mendo Dope and original stuff. Yep. This lineup to our, our original roots was from the roots, yeah. And now, oh man, collecting the resin from this is... I can't wait to do a little taste of this. Let's taste it. Let's taste it. Let's taste it. Roll one up and taste some fresh squashed resin. Hit him up with this one right here. Mendo dopers in the jungle. No flying helicopters. I doubt they got a garden like this one. They ain't growing trees like these, please. No. <laughs> Yo. Snoop Dogg smokes more than me. We have smoke half when we do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we do we don't smoke it all the time. Yeah, we don't dab all the time. But there's very important times when we need to dab to get to the essence of our strains, to really taste what's really behind the curtains and every single part of it. And when it's done to perfection, like Paul just did, the time is now to see what the magic is. We're going Cheers. in on the microscopic level right now on Cheers. the resin. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, my brother. Dab and dab. Yeah, dab and do. <laughs> okay, let's wow. eat them up. Let's taste it. Ooh, we're all set. There it is. Are we ready to dab, y'all? Yeah, let's taste it. Let's see what our power is. Woo!
Oh my god. <laughs> so fresh. It's got that fresh hash flavor, completely different than the the. It goes to the inside of your gums. Mm. That is good. Woo! Oh, man. Good luck, Emerald mm. Cup. That's all I gotta say. We put our heart and soul into this. And, uh, that's all I can ask for. <laughs> Thank you, you did an excellent job. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Woo! Knuckles, brother. Knuckles, brother. Good work. Teamwork makes the dream work. And that's how it goes. <laughs> and just like, just like last time, we got the boys here hacking. Oh. Yeah, baby. We love it. Oh, dude. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, oh, that's good. I'm, I'm feeling my power kick in. I might just turn into an eagle and just fly away. <laughs> Tastes like marshmallow uh, oh, bubble gum. Huh? Mm. It's like a more, more mm. man, circus peanut almost. Circus peanut, bro. Good shit. Good shit, yeah. <laughs>